everyone. I'm Dr. Joanne Martin. My husband Elmer and I founded the museum, which means we started this museum. We took some money that we were saving to make a down payment on a house. We took money that we were using to buy food because we thought that a museum like this that would help to preserve our history, to show the way that our people, that people of African descent have fought for justice not just for African Americans, but for everyone. When we look at the Civil Rights Movement, even though black people marched in the streets and fought for civil rights, all of America enjoys the civil rights that were uh, fought for by those people out in the streets, out those people fighting for justice, those people fighting to make sure that this world recognize that we're all human beings, we all deserve to be free. So I want to welcome you to the museum. My husband Elmer uh, is no longer living. He died in 2001. But this museum meant so much to him because our young people in particular meant so much to him. He would want you to learn. He would want you to remember he would want you to know that you have the obligation and the privilege to fight for justice, to fight for freedom, and to assure that this United States of America and this world will always be a global nation of people who deserve to be free, who want to be free, and who want to love and respect one another. societies in New York and Pennsylvania. These interracial groups were racial expressions of women's political ideals and they led directly to voting rights activism before and after the Civil War. Throughout the 19th century, African American women like Harriet Fourteen Purvis, Mary Ann Shard Carey, and others worked on two fronts simultaneously, reminding African American men and white women that black women needed legal rights, especially the right to vote. After the Civil War, women's rights activists disagreed about whether to support ratification of the 15th Amendment, which provided voting rights regardless of race, but, but which did not explicitly enfranchise women. The resulting split in the women's movement marginalized African American women. You will find out more about how the 15th Amendment, the 16th Amendment, and the 19th Amendment were key regarding getting voting rights for African American women. Stay tuned, there's more to come. Museum regarding the women's suffrage and voting suppression theme. So some of the concepts that we will explore, explore will be to compare and contrast information that we've received. We will be comparing information from the past in the 1800s, 
moving on up to the 1900s. And my, isn't it a perfect time that voting is taking place right now and looking at voting rights as it relates to today. Some other things we will do is discuss points of view. We will hear the points of view from long ago, and we want to hear your point of view regarding information that's shared with you. We want to know if you agree, are you for or against voting rights for women? We're going to explore what those from the 1800s felt should be for women's voting rights and those who felt, um, who were against voting rights from long ago. You will be involved in outlining information. You will be doing research. You will be able to analyze information that you research as well as information that we provide. You will be involved in discussion groups. There will be many, many concepts that we will share with you this summer. Stay tuned. Rosa Parks, on December 1st, 1955, Rosa Parks boarded a bus in Montgomery, Alabama. Instead of going to the back of the bus, which was designated for African Americans, she sat in the front. When the bus started to fill up with white passengers, she was asked to move. She refused. She was, her resistance set in motion one of the largest social movements in history, the Montgomery Bus Boycott. Rosa Louise McCartley was born on February 4th, 1913 in Tus Tuskegee, Alabama. As a child, she went to an industrial school for girls and later enrolled in Alabama State Teachers College for Negroes, present day Alabama State University. Unfortunately, Parks was forced to withdraw after her grandmother became ill. Growing up in the segregated South, Parks was frequently confronted with racial discrimination and violence. She became active in the civil rights movement at a young age. Parks married a local barber by the name of Raymond Parks when she was 19. He was actively fighting to end racial injustice. Together, the couple worked with many social justice organizations. Eventually, Rosa was elected secretary of the Montgomery chapter of the National Association of the Advancement of Colored People. Today, we simply say NAACP. Hold on, there's more to be shared about Rosa Parks. Mm -hmm.